Hello and welcome to Shake Them Ropes. Rob McCarron here. It is episode 85 along with Jeff Hawkins. For those watching on YouTube or VoicesOfWrestling.com, that's Jeff. Hi, Jeff. This is going to be the greatest Shake Them Ropes of all time as soon as someone points out the curtain to me. <laughs> Reference to our Top 100 match. It is. It is indeed. Top 100 match we're going to talk about later. Diamond Dallas Page, Randy Savage, Spring Stampede 1997. Featuring an NWO run-in, the likes you haven't seen since March of this year. <laughs> but uh, yeah. we will get to that. We are going to talk Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch from NXT TakeOver one week later. We are going to talk about this Raw. We're going to talk about this pay-per-view that's coming up. We're only a week and a half removed from the last WWE pay-per-view. we got one more to get to. Elimination Chamber. And then two weeks after that, we got Money in the Bank. And then two weeks after that, we got Starcade, and then two weeks after that, we got Halloween Havoc coming a little early this year. A lot of specials coming up on the WWE Network, and you can a get the WWE. And ne- there's a and there's a bunkhouse stampede somewhere in there as uh, well. I'm sure. I'm sure we're gonna have <laughs> war games at some point. The oft rumored war games. You know who are you gonna put in there? Randy Orton and Kane against uh, be everyone. Nothing- going to be nothing but NXT women. Oh, yeah, which uh, you can fill it now. You can fill a war games with the NXT women's division. You know, put some <laughs> Dana Brooke in there to be the Sid Vicious of the cage match and just beat up everybody but end up, you know, losing and causing injuries. Mm-hmm. That would be her role. I'd still love it, though. I'd still love it. I'm a little tired, Jeff. Okay. I'm a little not necessarily sleep, sleep tired. Just, just sick and tired? Exhausted a little bit. I uh, I spent some of the last week in Indianapolis for some of the Indy 500 events. Oh, really? Nice. I got burnt. I don't know if it's going to come across on video so well, but I got burnt from head can't to wait toe. To, can't wait to see it. Oh, I got <laughs> so burnt. Just standing out in the sun, doing nothing and, you know, not being well prepared. Bald people forget we, ha- we don't have hair no longer. I know. I keep, I keep thinking, okay, there's still hair up there. I'm going to be all right. Nope. No, as you guys can see. And even if you're listening to the podcast version, you've never seen a picture of me. You probably knew. You yeah. probably knew. What? Com- comes across in your voice. That you're it comes across my voice that I'm just a <laughs> skinny bald man. But what are you going to do? Uh, so I did that. But the point of that was I was away for the weekend. Really, the day after NXT TakeOver until right uh-huh. before Raw on Monday, I was away. Like I, okay. I skimmed the Twitter here and there but never really got a full flow of anything that was going on, not just wrestling related, but like anything in the world related. We could have gone to a war and I would not have known. I just wasn't keeping track with everything. And I got to tell you, there was a lot of talk about this Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks match that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Like, and Samoa Joe debuting, everyone's going crazy about Samoa Joe and his contract situation. And the fact that ROH announced that he's going to work their TV taping uh, at the end of June. So everyone's just amazed with the Samoa Joe contract situation. A lot going on in the wrestling world, and it all kind of stems from NXT recently. Like, NXT is the buzz amongst us right now. And yet, last night was the go-home show for your pay-per-view event, or your special event on the network, now that pay-per-view is dead. Go-home Raw for the Elimination Chamber. And honestly, coming out of this Raw, what has the most buzz? Is it... Kevin Owens-Cena. It is. That's it. it. Is Kevin That's Owens the list. And, Cena. and it's... This, this- Oh, I got a promo to cut on this Raw. Do you now? This this Raw, in terms of scripting it for a build for your special event Sunday, it was terrible from top to bottom with the exception of Owens. And you know what? I, it, the one other really good thing, I thought the Entourage guys were good during that match with Zack Ryder, and Zack Ryder looked like yeah. a million bucks. They should have given him They should have given him a count-out win and send the Nassau crowd home. With a, with a nice feeling in their thing. But the other matches from top to bottom, I mean, is this how you're going to build a card? You have, okay, let's start from the top on down. You had a bait and switch, basically, the entire Raw as to whether or not Dean Ambrose was going to get the match, teasing that Roman Reigns might get it the entire time without really saying that he might get it. The Elimination Chamber, you made half of the guys irrelevant. <laughs> the tag team match was inexplicably booked 10 on three by a heel general man or heel director of operations. Did this make anybody want to see that match? No, you have a women's triple threat where two of them are heels 
And one of them doesn't have any crowd support behind them because they're not sure if they're going to turn heel again because they've been turned so many times. The Bo Dallas... Adrian Neville match is your typical mid-card face gets beat down for a couple weeks and he'll probably get the win back. And then you have Owens and Cena, which has been fantastic. That's it. That's really the, the heat on this entire card. Elimination Chamber is Sunday, so we're going to go through these matches and I'm going to counter every single one of your points. Right. All of them. And say this was the greatest Raw Go Home of all time. <laughs> I may not go necessarily that far. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as you did, as far as, you know, we'll talk about it here, but WWE Network, you can get it oh. for free, voicesofwrestling.com slash WWE Network. Uh, let's go into one of the first things you mentioned, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this Divas Championship first. Okay. You mentioned that two of them were heels, and the other, the crowd is unsure of because they've flipped so many times. Explain well, to the people which two are the heels, and which one is the one that's flipped. <laughs> Naomi and Paige, and then you have Nikki Bella. Paige isn't a heel? Really? Who are these people? I mean, did I miss something? Am I just not seeing things on Raw the way that others are seeing? Paige is going after the championship that the Bellers screwed her out of. And True. Naomi screwed her out of, who is a heel now. True, but they've also turned Nikki face. So by de facto reasoning, Nikki or Paige attacking Nikki is now a heel. No, I think Paige attacking Nikki is this baby face who's trying to get her championship back. D does she does she come off as a baby face to you on television? I don't think she necessarily comes off of anything outside of just yeah. neutral. But I, I'm free. You know what? In terms of that rant I just said, I'm happy to be wrong on any of that. I am, but I don't see it. I, you know, this is one of those. <laughs> Dear God, the Bellas are terrible in terms oh, of talking. God. In terms of talking, they are. I mean, that that Memorial Day thing. I made the joke that they probably lose their place in an everyday conversation. It hurts them to emote, probably. I mean, my, <laughs> they were just bad all night. I, see, I'm the opposite. I think if they were allowed to be natural, which is when Nikki was in the peak of her heel run, yes. I felt like that was kind of being, you know, her being natural. That That's a terrible thing to say, but I agree with you. I, I think just, you know, she. It, it's always more fun to be heels. You hear wrestlers say this all the time. Yes. Randy Orton never wants to be a babyface for the rest of his life because it's more yeah. fun to be a heel and you get to be this guy that maybe you're not, but you also get to act naturally doing it. I think if yeah. Roman Reigns were a heel, like he'd be the most over babyface in two years, you know? Yeah, it's 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 because they, they make you so false endearing that, that it comes off as phony and nobody believes it. And I would just like, because I think the Bellas, when they're natural, sound perfectly fine. When they're given babyface scripts... They get to that mode, and and Honk. many and many of the women and many of the men do like many of the wrestlers yeah. do when oh, they're yeah. given babyface scripted lines. They get into this mode that uh, you just don't believe it's real, or you're you know they look like they're reading and they sound like they're reading and they almost smell like they're reading and they feel like they're reading. Honk I, honk 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 said the goss. That's goose. <laughs> stop being so old, Jeff. <laughs> We're, Sorry. we're a hip young show and you're making references from only I can imagine that's the 50s. I know. I think that's the Christina Applegate movie somewhere down the line that I can't remember, but just stuck in my head. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> At least from the 90s, then. Yeah. Come on know. now. Some of these okay. people weren't born in the 90s. Sorry. Oh, Jeff Hawkins. Um, Continue. I'm excited, I think, for this triple threat. Naomi, I Mickey, too. and Paige. I, I think that they're motivated. I, now, they're now motivated, call me, yeah. Call, call me crazy. I think there's a little bit of professional no, professional crazy. jealousy coming in here. I do. I think I think they're going to really try. Oh, look at all this buzz the NXT women's match got. Well, we can do that too. Mm. And it could over-deliver. It could over-deliver. It could, it could be a brilliant mess, though. It in, could over-deliver, though. In almost any situation, I would say this narrative about WWE folk listening to NXT talk and being jealous and wanting to outdo NXT would be completely ridiculous. But the Bellas have gone on record in many yes. interviews and public forums that they are jealous of what the NXT women get to do and the time I that they're given. I made this point last week, yes. Right. So the, I, I could <laughs> obviously see the Bellas. And Paige has been down there in NXT, and she left right before NXT women got good and built up an entire division you know, on the backs of one person who we'll talk about later. Um, and, and then there's Naomi who has yeah. been so close to the top of the female division in WWE and then an injury hits her or AJ Lee comes back or something else happens that this is her time. And I think this is the day that you give Naomi 
the Divas Championship. And boy, I think she would run with it so well. It's a little confusing because they brought Paige back as well. And it's like, I would have much rather had Naomi versus Nikki and I would have definitely gone Naomi all the way. I agree with you. It's time to give Naomi a run with this belt and see what she can do. We've had Naomi versus Nikki twice. One was on main events and no one ever noticed it, but she beat her twice. Yeah. Like she beat her clean twice in singles matches. It is time for Naomi to not be blocked by someone coming back or an injury at an unfortunate time. I hope Naomi wins. I would like to see her win because I'm interested in the Naomi page, you know, heel versus baby face run. Maybe give the Bellas something else to do. Maybe turn them full fledged face, get them away from the title picture, you know, do something with John Cena, do something with Daniel Bryan and them, or just have the Bellas back in the total divas pool where they're having matches weekly against other total divas that aren't necessarily for championships. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's a little nagging voice in my head that says that this entire card could be an overbooked mess. And with Tamina and Brie involved as well, yeah. this match could, this match could get a it little bit be part of that because yeah. I, it's the elimination chamber. It's not going to be on traditional pay-per-view. So all of the revenue for this is coming on the WWE network, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's all coming from there. This is going to be a special they could book it differently. Like we talk about some of the pay-per-views being three hour, uh, you know, special editions of raw or something just to bid, you know, build storylines to the next pay-per-view and bridge them across. This could be one of them. This could be a hundred percent that. Yeah. I mean, it really could. I, I think a lot of people are looking at the elimination chamber and because that's a, a stipulation that hasn't been back since early last year and it's been missing. Like this is a stipulation that people are, okay, this is a real special event. Like this is the biggest, the biggest pay-per-view that we've had since WrestleMania. And I think that might be one fooling a lot of people because this could really be just an extra TV episode that obviously doesn't have a lot of forethought behind it because a month ago, they didn't know they were doing this show. Yeah. Right. Just a month ago, didn't didn't know they were doing this show. And now you have, you know, championship matches that I'm looking forward to the match, but I don't, I don't know if I would go so far as to say that we should be more excited about this show than even payback. Just no. because they're building to Money in the Bank, and Money in the Bank is another gimmick match uh, pay per view that'll just build all the way to SummerSlam. It's crazy to think that SummerSlam might be the actual next pay per view where we actually get something done, like something real yeah. happens. Yeah, I would agree. And of course, that'll correspond to Brock Lesnar probably coming back, and you know, Brock Lesnar's back, so you know we can actually pay attention because things mean something again. Mm-hmm. Um, Neville and Bo Dallas is a singles match in this pay per view. Yes. Neville is selling the knee. Bo Dallas is Mr. Positivity. I like Bo Dallas. I like what Neville's done. Obviously, Neville is going into this match hurt, injured. So Bo Dallas seemingly has a shot. But Neville just won a match on Raw with the same injury, maybe even worse than it will be after he gets a week to rest. And he won. Should there be any shock that Neville's going to just blow away through Bo Dallas here on the pay-per-view? Is this just another singles match to get Neville a solid win against a no-name? So it can kind of rehab him from all his losses to King Barrett and others. They could really mess this up by giving Bo Dallas a lot of offense in here. <laughs> I think Neville should tear through the guy, I, but that's me. I, I'm fine with Bo Dallas getting offense in here because the thing oh, I'm with, fine with I'm fine with some offense. I'm I'm not fine with. Yeah, it'll be a match. It'll it'll be a, a match a, a where flu, he's a fluke win. Let's put it this way: a fluke win would do Neville no good. Okay, here. well that's a whole lot different than Bo Dallas getting a lot of offense because Bo Dallas that's, could be. Yes, that's you what know, I'm meaning. The big heel. He'll take 80% of the match. Yeah. Neville will get the start. Neville will get the end. It's yeah. all about what happens at the end there. And it's all about mm-hmm. making sure it's clean and that's not a faux finish and just something I, put together yeah. weekly. Uh, but I would see Neville getting the win here, right? Bo Dallas has no shot. I hope so. Can they be extending this feud possibly? No, because I think both of these guys would be in Money in the Bank. Yeah, and because they both have the history with the ladder in NXT. Yeah, I think I think they'll play on that a little bit, too. Yeah. So it'll continue just not in a singles uh, singles feud here. Um, we should talk about the pre-show before we get too far. The pre-show is going to be Miss TV. That's going to be interesting. Daniel Bryan is the guest. His book is coming out or his DVD, I guess, is coming out three days later, two days later on Tuesday. So is this just a promotional appearance for that DVD or could there be something of note actually happening in this Miss TV segment? thought about but i don't think it's going to be that significant i think it's going to be the you know miz talking about how hot a movie star he is versus daniel bryan plugging the dvd and then yeah. eventually maybe a punch or a yes lock or something and then get the crowd fired up for the uh for the real event yeah yeah i don't i don't see anything special i mean they're looking for ways for daniel bryan just to get on tv this is a way for him to get on tv 
It's mm-hmm. a pre-show. One week of build doesn't necessarily tell me something important's going to happen. I think it's just a nice little uh, build yeah. up to his DVD, which looks and, interesting. It, it's fascinating to me that now they're going to bring out Daniel Bryan when he's injured to to keep the crowd going and to plug stuff, as opposed to like when he was hot in oh, pop culture. They don't have to push him now. No, that's they can true. Put him on, they can plaster him on TV without having the worry of actually having to do something with him. Mm-hmm. So it's perfect situation for WWE. Oh, yeah, we'll get Daniel Bryan on TV. We know he's popular, but we don't have to give him the title or the main event picture. Right. You know, he doesn't have to be on 45 minutes of our TV. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, there. Uh, we're getting to the big stuff now because I want to end with the chamber matches. Okay. We have John Cena versus Kevin Owens, the United States champion against the NXT champion. This is a non-title match because Kevin Owens yes. doesn't want the U.S. title. His prize is the NXT title. Of course, John Cena doesn't want the NXT title because he's the U.S. champion fighting for the United States of America. The U.S. champion against the NXT Canadian champion. This one is, to me, the main event of the show, the match I'm most looking forward to. A match Mm -hmm. that former uh, guest of the program, Dylan Waco, says should end in a non-finish. And if you want to get specifics on that one, you can follow Dylan at Dylan Waco. What do you think about this one? What do you think WWE would do with these two guys? And are you like me anticipating this match the most of the show? I agree with both you and Dylan. I think, I think, yes, I'm anticipating the heck out of this match. I think maybe oh, non-finish is a bit strong, but I think Owen should end up on top, but I don't think either of them should get pinned or beat. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you say that it's kind of an Easter egg for later when, if, when, and if, you decide to bring Kevin Owens up. I think this is his match in front of the boss, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's going to be a barometer. And I think, you know, I think Cena is going to make him look like a rock star. And so, yes, I'm, I'm very excited about this match. DQ count out something to that effect, but nothing clean. Cause they don't have to again. And this is the match where it really bangs home that, you know, this elimination chamber was a house show as of three weeks ago. But man, would it be interesting if they decide last minute put the belt on the line and Owens went to NXT with the U.S. title? I'd love that. Your current but WWE that's... linear champion for those following the linear title at VoicesOfWrestling.com. <laughs> current linear champion is John Cena, right? Mm. Ooh. So if Kevin Owens were to get the win here, mm. Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe for the WWE linear title. Samoa Joe beats Kevin Owens somehow in a singles match. <laughs> and he goes to ROH. And he goes to Ring of Honor as the WWE <laughs> linear champion. Oh, it's like the punk storyline done right. And somehow loses it to Adam Cole. And then Adam Cole gets <laughs> signed and he brings the linear title back. This is how I would book the WWE linear championship throughout the summer. Hey, you started this account. <laughs> Bring it to re- I didn't start it, but I Oh, okay. Damn well finished it. Run that at WWE Linear. You can, the real world champion pins, submissions only, no DQs, no count outs. Any matches for the WWE Linear Championship. John Cena, your current champion, hasn't even faced a threat in three months for it, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I have, uh, I just don't know what they're going to do with this because Kevin Owens is, again, impounded in a program with Samoa Joe. He's in yeah. a program eventually with Finn Balor, you would think, although they didn't do anything with it with NXT TV. Uh, you would think, you know, John Cena is probably not the only match of them. Like, I mean, for example, earlier today, NXT announced that they were going to California in October to be a part of the Monster Energy Aftershock Festival. At my part of California or Northern? Sacramento, yeah. Uh, Sacramento. Mm-hmm. But it, it's not like an NXT show. They're going to have right. matches during the day at the outdoor festival. Mm-hmm. Or indoor, it might be indoor, I don't know. But they're going to California. The three names they put on the poster are Finn Balor, Charlotte, and Sasha Banks. Now, in the press release, they have guys like Blake and Murphy. They have Bailey. They have Baron Corbin. No Kevin Owens. You said Bailey with such disdain. I'm Continue. just saying all the names. No Kevin <laughs> Owens. No Hideo Itami because of injury. No Sami mm-hmm. Zayn because he might be out with injury. But Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Not listed anywhere. This guy is not long for NXT. I honestly think that you have TV tapings for NXT in the middle of June. Maybe his last show, if not the August before SummerSlam, the August NXT live special 
is his last show. I don't think he's in NXT after August. I would have this start as a wrestling match, so to speak, and just have it devolve into an all out fight. And then just, you know, just mass chaos and eventually maybe ended in a double count out. Yeah, because I wonder, because Kevin Owens' motivation isn't to win the U.S. title, so it's not like he has to pin or submit John Cena, it's to fight him. Yeah, it, start, it starts out as, like, the match, you know, whatever, and then eventually, as Cena's getting the better of him, then he just decides, you know what, I'm just going to take my pound of flesh out on Cena. Yeah. That would be great. You know, one option you could go with is someone from NXT interferes and helps out John Cena, you know, get the babyface rub, and then they go back to NXT and feud. I'm not seeing Samoa Joe or Finn Balor on this show, so, like, who would help? John Cena. And does John Cena need help? No, John Cena doesn't need help. He does everything by himself. Is there a heel right now that's going to come out and help Kevin Owens? Like, it's not going to be Rusev. That ship has sailed. I don't see them doing John Cena and Rusev anymore. Do they debut no. somebody? Who would they debut? The guy they would debut is Kevin Owens, and he's in the mm-hmm. match already. Right. So, like, I, I don't know if anyone's going to interfere in this. It's just going to be a fight. It's going to go anywhere. They're going to be like, oh, I wish these two guys were in the chamber so they could finish this fight. Where is the chamber? Corpus Christi. Texas. Let me ask you something, just hypothetically. Oh, no. No, 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 it's a good thing. I don't know about Jeff Hawkins' hypothetical questions. The last time there was a Jeff Hawkins' hypothetical questions. It was awesome. Sure, (laughs) I don't remember it. Okay. Would Corpus Christi lose their mind? Is it the kind of crowd, if Samoa Joe came out and made this a non-contest, and it just became an all-out brawl? No. Between the three of them. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, I don't think, I don't know. Maybe, what, maybe, maybe Austin, but not Corpus Christi. I think it's, it's definitely a positive that Kevin Owens has been in the last two weeks of Raw. Cause if he wasn't and was just showing up for the first time in yeah, Corpus that, Christi, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think that would do well for him. Heck, I don't think they pushed him hard enough. They should have shown that Michael Cole video on Raw. Well, yeah. He's gotten over John Cena the last two weeks. Like, he's been oh, no, the no, one who's that, left no, John Cena lane. Don't, don't get me wrong. That was great. That part was great. I mean, even just shove it more down our throats that this Kevin Owens guy is a star because even the crowd is still kind of, eh, who is this guy? Now, it, do, thing. it does make me fear that they're just going to, you know, Kevin Owens is going to lose. And you know what? Some people would be, you know, some people are already saying on Twitter, like, watch, they're going to bury Kevin Owens. He's going to lose to John Cena. Losing to John Cena is not a burial in this no. program because Kevin Owens has got the upper hand twice already. It'll be a competitive match. It's not like he's going to lose in two minutes. And losing to John Cena doesn't really hurt guys. I could see Vince and, and Triple H having a bit of a discussion behind closed doors about this one with maybe a little bit of an argument there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm interested in the result. You know, yeah. and if it's a John Cena win, okay. I'm, hi- I'm hyped as hell. For this. It, it could be I a really- John Cena win. After all, NXT is the lower brand. You know, WWE in their mind not necessarily. I don't even know if I want WWE to be pushing NXT as the top brand. Like I'm entertained by all the things that are happening in NXT. You know what else I'd be fine with, to be honest with you? If if he gets an STF on Owens, Owens does a quick tap and then just comes in with a chair and just beats the hell out of Cena. Yeah, because again, his motivation is to beat up and fight John Cena. Yes. It's not to get a victory it, over him. Yeah. So you yeah. can push that angle and I think it would work <laughs> out just fine. Yeah. Uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. A uh, Dean Ambrose is in the role of getting Seth Rollins a win. But based on recent history, I don't even know if they're going to give Seth Rollins a win. Like, how will Kane play into this one? Prop comic, your favorite prop comic, Dean Ambrose is back. He had another oh. one driving a police car with the police hat and everything. They just can't get yeah. over it. Dean Ambrose is the, the prop guy. He's the carrot yeah. top of WWE. Yep. Um... Yeah, this again has the has the it could be overbooked with the Stooges and Kane, et cetera. And and of course, ooh, that weasel, that 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 weasel, Seth Rollins. Oh, he snuck out another win over Ambrose. It's like, uh, just give him the strong win. If you're gonna make him credible, give him a strong win here. But I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah. I, I don't see a, a strong win necessarily. But there'll I see be a win. Ch- there'll there will be chicanery, but yes, Seth I see, Rollins. I see a win. Yeah. Because Seth Rollins at some point has to get a win. And Dean I Ambrose agree. is, you know, a perfect, you know, person, honestly. Because mm-hmm. Dean Ambrose doesn't lose much. Like, no. if he could survive what happened to him at the end of 2014, month after hold month. On. Hold on. He just loses on, on special events. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, he survived the TV exploding. He survived a hologram in the middle of a cage. Like, this guy can survive things. Mm-hmm. Losing in a strong competitive match. 
to Seth Rollins when honestly everyone at the show they might barely even remember John Cena and Kevin Owens. They're going to yeah. remember the the main event which could be the Intercontinental Championship Chamber match. Most likely it's going to be this title match, but mm -hmm. They remember the chamber matches, the results of it anyway. They remember Kevin Owens and John Cena. They're not in two weeks during the next pay-per-view going to remember Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Dean Ambrose, another guy who's probably going to be in Money in the Bank for a shot at the championship. This guy is on Raw begging for this title match when he's lost a U.S. title match. He's lost an Intercontinental Championship ladder match the day before he lost the U.S. Championship match. Like mm -hmm. This guy is like, finally, I get a title shot. You just had two in a two-day span and lost them both. Yep. Go into, go into <laughs> the have, Money in the Bank. Try to get another have, championship match. I have nothing to add. Who did they say was in the Money in the Bank on Monday? Did they say Roman Reigns was in it? Roman Reigns started on SmackDown last week saying he was putting his name in the hat for the Money in the Bank. Yeah, that's okay. why I referenced to you that they were already starting the push for that show with Elimination Chamber still one week away because Roman Reigns is talking about Money in the Bank because he doesn't really have anything to do on this pay-per-view. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of he's there's a lot the show. There's a lot of people with nothing to Roman do. Roman Reigns is on the show. I know he's gonna help out Dean Ambrose. Maybe he may get a single match against Kane or something on here. Maybe. I mean, he's not. He's just not on the yeah, show. Yeah, so you know he'll what? play that, a part that, in the main event. Uh, he'll play yeah, a part in the main event. Yeah. Right. He'll play a part. Yeah. Randy Orton will play a part somewhere in the main event. Bray Wyatt isn't on this show. I think Wyatt's appearing later. I think Wyatt's appearing in the chamber, but. Continue. Luke Harper and Rowan aren't on this show. Nope. There are people not on this show. Because it's Correct. it's a thunder. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, this the show doesn't matter. Like, it's another reason why you can get the network for free. Because, hey, it's another show. But as far as what they're going to do to make it mean something, it doesn't really mean anything. But I'm excited for the matches. Again, this is another show that may not have meaning going in, may have lackluster build. But you look at the card, you got two chamber matches. You got Neville and Bo Dallas, which, you know, will be good. Their NXT match was excellent, although it had the ladder. Mm -hmm. Some people think Bo Dallas, oh, he's okay. He's funny sometimes, but he's not a worker. He's all right for himself. No, he's fine. I, I'm interested in him more than C.J. Parker. And people are praising <laughs> C.J. Parker sometimes. Uh, Dean Ambrose, Where? Seth Rollins, great. Some people have been doing it. When he quit, oh, the, the fervor over C.J. Parker. Okay. This guy wasn't given time. This guy is a great worker. He was developing on the indies, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> tag team chamber match. John Cena, Owens. I mean, this show has a lot of stuff. Yes. That I'm really excited to see. Uh, let's get to these chamber matches. Oh, you know what? Before that. Before that. You were talking earlier in your opening rant about Raw about how Roman Reigns bait and switched this, bait and switched that. Roman Reigns was considered a title challenger, and then Dean was, Ambrose came back. This, it was a tease. Well, no, that's fine. This is And the tease is what WWE has done that we've been noticing for months and months. We're on these Raws in between. Now, this was a little bit more apparent because, I mean, man, there were only two Raws in between pay-per-views here. Sometimes they do it when there are four or five just to get to the next week. But they do these show-long segments, like it's a contained storyline for one episode of Raw. Like... It's going to start with one thing happening and going to end with that same thing happening. But for the three hours in between, we got to act like there's a swerve somewhere. Yeah. Dean Ambrose is the challenger to open the show. He'll be the challenger to end the show. But for those three hours, we got to make you wonder who's the challenger going to be. Like something can change. Mm -hmm. They did this with the Randy Orton storylines when he was going against the authority only to, you know, go back to being against the authority from joining them and blah, blah, blah. And it does nothing to help Ambrose, to be honest with you. Does nothing to help Ambrose if you have well, as a legitimate as a legitimate title. Contender. Yeah, it's Let's interesting too in Roman Reigns' position because this is a guy in storyline who would want the title shot, yet his best friend is doing it. He's supporting his friend going for the title, but at the same time he wants it. So you would think there would be some animosity there. Yeah, it's a little weird. And plus, he was laughing during his beatdown, which was yeah. interesting too. But okay, I, we'll just have to see what happens because Roman Reigns, I have to think, is going to play some part in the yeah. finish. Of yeah. this uh, pay-per-view match. But we'll start with the tag team chamber match. The New Day are defending against the Ascension. Los Matadores. Lucha Dragons. Kid and Cesaro. And I think that's it. Primetime players are in there. Yeah. These are your six teams. They're going to somehow fit two guys in each pod. While I liked the idea of, uh, of Rowan and Harper 
killing the geeks and just making it six people. I think they're going through with all six teams, and I think a lot of these teams aren't going to last too long. But I think the New Day is going to come out on top. Wouldn't it be something? If they bring back the Wyatt family in full, the lights go mm. out at some point. And one of these teams, or maybe it happens at some other part in the show. Maybe Roman I, Reigns is out for a promo and the Wyatt's hit. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen during the chamber. And it's going to happen to Ryback, but continue. I somehow think there's a 50% chance that the Wyatt family returns as a unit on this show. I do as well. Maybe should it be more than 50%? No. No, just a little coin flip, a little coin flip action. Uh, so who wins the tag titles? I think New Day retains. I think they're, New Day they're, retains they're, too. They're too hot right now to take the belts off of them. Well, I don't see any as, title as much, changes. As much, as much as I love Kid and Cesaro, and yeah. if if somebody else gets the belts, it's gonna be them, and I have no problem with that whatsoever. But right now, the New Day is doing great heel work here, so let's see how far we can go with it. Yeah, I don't honestly see any title changes because I think your title change, if you will, is going to be the Intercontinental Championship, and they'll be like, okay, this was a show we yeah. didn't plan out. This is just a filler show. This is something well, for no, the network have, audience. Hold on, hold on. We have the Divas title changing, and we have— Oh, that's yeah. right. We do. We do have the Divas title changing. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nikki could keep it, but— and, and the U.S. title isn't on the line, so— The U.S. title isn't on the line, right. All right. That's true. Intercontinental Championship. Mm -hmm. Before we knew all the participants, a lot of us, and we talked about, Sheamus was probably the favorite. Mm -hmm. Does adding Rusev into this match change that at all? Does no. Rusev become the favorite? No. No. Okay. I think it's going to be Sheamus all the way. Uh, because you have the... Somehow, Lana and Dolph are going to end up getting Rusev beat or get out of the chamber or something to that effect. Um, I expect our troop to get one fluke pin, maybe over Barrett. Um, Barrett doesn't need the title because he's the king. Yeah. Uh, I think I think the Wyatt, I think Bray Wyatt somehow appears here and takes out Ryback somehow. Yeah. Or the Wyatt family. That, that's his thing. He'll just show up from under yeah. the ring. He'll show well, up in hologram form. Hologram. Yeah, because the only three guys here who can win are Ryback, uh, Rusev, or. Or Sheamus because of the way that Raw was booked to, to be legitimate. So, I mean, I think, you know, there's... And Sheamus needs something because this is his new build. Yeah. So they're going to give him the Intercontinental title. To me, there's only two options for, for a uh, victory here. And this is why I don't think it would be the main event. Not that it was having any chance of being the main event on the show. But you have Sheamus and you have Rusev. And I think they will... They have plenty of outs for Rusev with the Lana Dolph Ziggler thing to where they can get yeah. him out. And there you are. You're with Sheamus again, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Barrett's not going to win. Although that no. would just be perfect WWE for him to lose every match he's ever in, but somehow <laughs> still win the Intercontinental Championship and then go on to a losing streak again. Yeah. I mean, let's look at this Intercontinental title curse that we thought was over because King Barrett was the champion. You know, King Barrett loses it, becomes this big geek, and then wins the... The kingship, which doesn't really matter aside from changing his name, getting the bad news Barrett to go away. Daniel Bryan, another injury. Not that, not that any of this is the Intercontinental Championship's fault, but it's just so strange how that happens. The only way you can put this on Rusev is if you're going to build to a Cena-Rusev unification, and I right. don't see that happening. No, because we've done Cena and Rusev so much that they just can't go back to it right now. And then... You know, what? what is made of the Dolph Ziggler and Rusev stuff? Because they really haven't had this big singles match since this new scenario with Lana. Yeah, so I think they're, gonna, there. they're going to tease the hope spot with R-Truth here. He, he's the Rick Martell in the Rumble spot yeah. here. He has no chance of winning, but they're gonna. he's going to get a fluke pin, and he'll probably be the last guy in there against Sheamus. Bro kick, one, two, three. I think Sheamus will win too, but let's talk about Lana and Rusev from Raw this week. Okay. Because this is somewhat... Not necessarily a hot topic, but some people are talking about it. Rusev, you know, entertain, it. Rusev entertains the hell out of me. Rusev entertains you. But think about this for Lana right now. The character right. of Lana, when she came mm. on board, okay? Quit being that guy. <laughs> you're such, now you're old creepy guy is what you are. You're Ooh. old creepster Jeff Hawkins. You I'll can take. catch old creepster Jeff Hawkins at Crap Game 13. Hey, on come here. The Sit on my lap. On the Twitters, by the way. Right. Um, Lana, when she started with WWE, when yes. her first on-screen appearance, and for the last year and a quarter, she has been the leader of Rusev, if you will, 
-hmm. the woman that tells Rusev what to do, literally. She would be the one who told him to lock in the submission and when to stop it. She was the boss. She was was the beauty to his beast. She was the strong. And and, well, no, see, that undermines everything. The beauty and the beast aspect. This woman was the smart boss. Well, that doesn't mean that she wasn't the beast. She can also be. But when we talk about Lana and we're talking about the fact that she was the boss of Rusev, she was the leader, she was the businesswoman, she was the strong, patriotic Russian who was here to... (laughs) I mean, basically take over, if you will. But she was a strong, independent woman. Yes. Yeah. She. Okay. She was. She, she wasn't she was made the, to be. She, a, she wasn't made to be a sexual object. All no. Right? She was the. She was the games master. And then you have comments when people try to make these points. Oh, she was the beauty to his beast. I mean, I, that I, undermines I, everything. It, no, it didn't. It, it undermines didn't. everything. And then you. And then people will say, "Oh, I didn't mean anything by it. I'm just making. A, you know. No, but that does. That was the entire act, though. It doesn't mean that she wasn't smart and and conniving. But it's the first thing you thought of. No, and she now, wasn't. And now in WWE land, it's the only thing you think of because ever since that breakup with Rusev and now that it's finalized on Raw, is she's no longer the strong, smart, independent woman. She's no longer goal-oriented in WWE. She broke up with Rusev. Here she is on this Raw after a week after kissing Dolph Ziggler. Hold on. All right, let me get through this. A week after kissing Dolph Ziggler for no apparent reason. She just goes into the ring when Dolph is there and kisses him. Because that's what she does. She's an attractive woman in WWE and all she should be there for is to pick a guy to be with. She comes out. Rusev somewhat apologizes to her. Says, let's take over WWE and America together again. Which was Lana's goal. Everything she had worked for for a year was to take over WWE and make the, you know, show us that Russia was more important than America. Like, it was the power. That was the real power. So, okay, she goes back to Rusev and then Rusev says, say I was wrong. Undermining... You know, Lana's strong independentness, independence, and she breaks up with him. But what does she do? Does she go find a man that can beat up Rusev and help her in domination? No, she goes to find someone to kiss Dolph Ziggler. At the time, at the time, NXT is building up these women who want to win championships and live their lives as champions and have goals to reach in WWE. What is Lana's goal right now? She's she had a set goal for a year. And now she's a woman that is just finding a guy to kiss because she got dumped by her boyfriend, Rusev. I, I agree 100% with everything you're saying here. But Lana has been on this trajectory for a while. When, when, when you put her up with Stephanie McMahon, Stephanie's alphaness will trump Lana's alphaness. And it's been downhill from there. When they stopped giving her her own entrance and just made her part of the act, kind of as a smarter version of Elizabeth, so no. to speak, or a stronger version of Elizabeth. It was going down this path. She's a hot chick that they want guys to cheer for. And it, yes, you are entirely correct on everything about your rant. Even if she's just this hot chick that you want guys to lust after, is putting her, like now we're just getting to whether it's smart or not for them to do what they're doing. Is it smart no. to putting her with a guy? No, not, not in this way. Not, not, not unless it, it's, it's a guy that's going to beat up Rusev and, and, and unless it's a swerve of yeah. some sort where they reconnect them. I'm still no. hoping. I'm still hoping this I, is just some long con. But No, you, yeah, we, we want her to be Alexandra York, and we're not getting that. So if I'm showing my age again, but that's my, the historian in me. Terry we want her Reynolds to be— for you people. Yes, yes. If you ever saw her in WCW being the, the brains behind the York Foundation. Hold, holding the small computer for the most computerized man of the 1990s, Terry Taylor. Oh, and Michael Wall Street. And Michael Wall Street, that's right. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, Lana was this woman who was, yes, aligned with a man, but not in a sexual relationship, not in a romantic relationship. She was a businesswoman. She had her own goals. And now everything she fought for the, for the last year, in, in storyline, everything she fought for for the last year is gone. She has no goal in that mind, at least that we know of, maybe there will be something with Dolph Ziggler that comes out here, but she's just in there, you know, going to the next guy, not for the reasons of beating Dolph or beating Rusev, because when she first started getting with Dolph, it wasn't for the purpose of beating Rusev. It was because, okay, this is an attractive guy. I'm going to kiss him. Yeah. I'm waiting for this to be spun as, Ooh, she's getting in Rusev's head. What about it, what about finding it, a wrestler in a platonic yeah. way to beat Rusev for a championship yeah. or show if, Rusev his errors? If this were wrestling, if this were Southern style wrestling, she'd have a tag team and a singles guy just go beat. She'd out heel Rusev at this point 
and go try and take him out for revenge. I just everything that made her a baby face being the strong woman that people could look up to, but it's not how Vince McMahon sees women in power. It was the same thing with Trish Stratus when she started to get over, she was the yeah. sexual object of Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think they're going to do the same thing here. It's, it's, you know, and, and to even go older, it's almost like when they turned baby doll, she became just not interesting at all but at the, that point. The advantage that Trish had was she was also a really good in-ring performer and she can yeah. go out there and get the crowd over with her wrestling. Lana can't do that. No. At least not it, right now, and maybe never. Maybe Lana won't ever be a wrestler. So you only have this backstage role where she's going to be subservient to a man, which is or, not what she should be doing to be getting over. Or to Stephanie. Or to Stephanie, but I mean, to the, to the authority. I, I don't type. see that happening either. Oh, I, I, God, I can see them doing this to make it a story, like a soap opera type thing, where where the authority starts abusing her as well. I get if she was going to bow down to Stephanie because everyone bows down to Stephanie because Stephanie's the boss, right? But that's different than bowing down to Rusev. No, I think they're going to move her away from Rusev after this. I like the fact that, okay, in this segment on Raw, Lana mm -hmm. for a split second looks like she's going back to Rusev because you know what? Rusev told her everything that she wanted. She wanted to dominate WWE and Rusev was the guy to do that with, right? Yep. It wasn't because she wanted... A relationship with him or they were going to be back together in boyfriend girlfriend roles no it was a business relationship it was a business relationship yeah but because that is broken now she's going to go back to kissing Dolph if she had gotten back together with Rusev and if this were real Rusev didn't make her say anything like he just accepted it because you know it's an even relationship would she still be making out with Dolph on screen if this were the attitude era she'd have hired the APA yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, no, everything's messed up in this thing now. And and not that not that the main roster has ever been able to write engaging female characters that well, unless it's Stephanie being overbearing, which you disagree with me on. But I stand by that but, statement. But now with Lana, it's undermining everything she she has been yes. with. So now the crowd is looking at this Lana and just being, OK, this is we're going to cheer when the hot girl. And the guy make out. We're going to cheer yes. when AJ Lee kiss guys, but no one took AJ Lee seriously. AJ Lee had to fight in the ring and be a worker woman for a year before mm -hmm. people started to take her seriously again. I don't think she ever fully recovered. No. Even before she left. Like Lana can't even get in the ring to try and win people back. That's why yeah. I fear for Lana right now in this position because she can't win people back unless she's the strong, powerful woman going after something. And she and can't do that when she's the girlfriend of Dolph Ziggler of all people. And if it's an enormous swerve, it's almost two weeks too late, to be honest with you. She should have done that at, against Cena when there were stakes to it. The two main points coming out of NXT TakeOver have been the fact that Samoa Joe is here. Before you get to that, can I, can I finish Raw and then we can move on? What else from Raw is worth just, discussing, and if you bring up anything I don't like, I will suspend you. Well, there's just one thing. All right, go ahead. St the Stephen Amell thing. It may seem like a small thing to you. But this is a guy who represents a show that represents your audience. And you keep not using him when he wants to be used by Raw. This is, to me, WWE, again, missing the point somehow. And far be it for me to speculate, but I'm going to speculate. There's an old school thinking from about 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago in Hollywood, that TV stars weren't as big as movie stars. And that it's much more important that you get movie guys because they have a lot more heft than these TV stars. I, why are you not using the heck out of this guy who is on a comic book show, which is a big part of your audience, comic book people, and, and using him well as opposed to just showing him for 20 seconds in a Stardust man? When he's gone on record and saying, please use me, WWE, I want to be on the show. He was the star of Arrow, right? Yes. And I'm looking at the viewership, and they do pretty well. I mean, for a CW show, they're getting 3 million viewers an episode. So it's not like a small show that's getting under a million. No. But I think, it, I think it's big timing that, you know, we make movies type yeah. of thing. And you're, you're a TV guy who wants to be on this. Hey, we got the cast of Entourage, who the studio's making be here right now. Um, not that they didn't do it again. They did a great job during that Zack Ryder match, I thought. But other than that, it was kind of a meh but they type don't, of thing. They don't have guest hosts. Even when it was Jeremy Piven, it wasn't Jeremy Piven hosting because of Entourage. It was him because of the goods, the movie he was doing. 
They have yeah. the Entourage cast hosting because of the movie they're doing. They were never right. hosting when Entourage was on. Right, because all television is their competition. Well, yeah, WWE is the TV show. If yeah, You but, can make they, movies and come on the show. Yeah, but you can't make a, a TV show that's on another night because you might draw audience from, unless, from them. Give me a break. Unless you're Donald Trump. Uh, unless you're Donald Trump, we'll get you on. I, I mean, uh, I didn't really see the Emily Wood, but maybe it's just because I don't, you know, watch Arrow. I, I just think it's a lost opportunity and it's them being a little bit out of touch. That's just me. The two main points coming out of NXT TakeOver, Samoa Joe's contract mm -hmm. and this Sasha Banks-Becky Lynch match. Yes. The best match of the show. What yes. some are saying is an early match of the year contender, and I don't know how you couldn't put it up there as a contender for match of the year because you don't know what's going to happen in the next six months. Like, it's, it's definitely on my top three right now, I, if anything. Uh, some people who are dismissing Becky Lynch and, Be and Sasha Banks as a match of the year contender are dismissing it because of all the matches that have yet to happen. Like, oh, at the end of the year, we're going to have so many four and a half star plus matches that we'll have to consider. You know, Slow not down. that there have been so many already. It's the fact that there might be more right Slow now. Down. Slow down, star geeks. Yeah. All right. It's a match of the year contender for a lot of reasons. Is anybody dismissing anything from New Japan Dominion because it was early in the year? No. Stop Wrestle it. Kingdom Dominion happens in July, Sorry. which also may have a match of the year contender on it with Okada and AJ Styles. Yeah, I'm showing my my basically my leisure. My, well, what was I going to say? My <laughs> your leisure casual fanness. Casual fanness. Thank you. My casual fanness of New Japan. I apologize. But. I think people are thinking about all the matches that will happen this year and saying, mm -hmm. okay, well, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks might be top five. It's got to be top five on most people's, you know, for the viewers of WWE, even New Japan, even Dragon Gate, even some of the top higher end promotions, Ring of Honor. Maybe if you think there's a match in Beyond Wrestling or PWG or some of these indies that don't have the followship uh, of even the top tier indies, if you think there's a match better than Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, that's fine. But you're thinking ones that have been seen by at least a million people, which by the time this airs uh, overseas, by the time NXT is seen by those who may not have watched it live, it'll be seen by a million people, right? Indie yeah, matches aren't going to be seen by that. Even the New Japan match isn't going to be seen yeah. by that. No. So right now, right now, I think it's my WWE match of the year. It, it, and any WWE match of the year, it's probably right up there with the triple threat from Royal Rumble. Yes, right? that's, I, that's, that's one, two. Yeah. Or two, one. It's right up there with that. And this might even be more important because Sasha Banks, as we talk about, has built NXT into the place for women's wrestling. She's done it by herself, seemingly. She's done it <sighs> along with Charlotte, along with Emma, along with Paige. But it's Sasha Banks that's the backbone of all of this. I was driving that bandwagon and there's still room. Come aboard. I asked on Twitter, is Sasha Banks the most important person to NXT in the last calendar year? And... I'm getting people on Twitter that have responded positively. You know, Jerry Cusan on Twitter says she's the person everyone thanks and wanted AJ to be. Uh, we have some people making joke answers like Bo Dallas. We have some people saying uh, no one's been better. It might have been Sami Zayn, but the poor guy can't stay healthy. Charlotte's just not as charismatic as Sasha. I think by nature of men's wrestling always being more important you have to judge on that criteria, and I think it might either be Zayn or Owens. I, Sasha, I Bank, Sasha Banks is going to be a 1A um, because that's the most interesting division in wrestling right now in terms of major companies in America. I think Sami Zayn's with the probably... With the, possible, with the possible exception of what Jay Lethal's done in Ring of Honor. Yeah, but Jay Lethal hasn't risen Ring of Honor up to anything. No, I agree. And so, and thus by being in a more high profile position, Sasha Banks is definitely, if she's not one, she's 1A. This is probably the least important part of it, but Sasha Banks is main eventing NXT house shows because, th and this is the important part of that. Management has faith in her to main event house shows. They have faith Man in her to go out there and put on long performances. They have faith in the NXT four and it's re-educating the fans on women's wrestling. I couldn't be happier. Could not be happier. Right. And, and NXT is now the place to watch women's wrestling in not only the U S but most of the world. Right. Okay. So Sasha Banks has done that almost single-handedly. Well, she had shimmer, partners. Sh shimmer fans are going to be mad at you, but continue. But I don't think there's anyone who would go in and say that the Sasha no. Banks, Becky no. Lynch match from takeover is subpar to any match that shimmer may have 
ever done, or at least has Rob, done in the last two years. Rob, it was just an aside. Just right. Continue. No, no, no. But I mean, you're right. There will be Shimmer people who will say, no, this match was better on Shimmer, and it wasn't. But no. there, you always want to defend these certain things. Yeah, but, it's it's like being it's like being fan of an indie record store, and it's so much better than your big other record stores. Yeah, okay, whatever, guys. No, but, this was a this was a great match. Right. Stop it. There's two people that people are bringing up that could be more important to NXT. One is Sami Zayn, which is probably the closest bet, right? Because Sami Zayn yes. was the heart of NXT for the end, yes. for the middle to the end of that division. Yes. Kevin Owens is one that, while he's important now, while he's great, while he's having stellar performances in the ring and on the microphone, he's not important to the level that Sasha Banks has been because NXT was already the darling brand to watch before Kevin Owens even got there. Right, but Kevin Owens has a little bit more heft now in that he was... His debut is probably the best debut they've had in WWE since maybe Karma. Um... And that's a long time. So now Owens becomes a little bit more important. I know he hasn't been there as long, but, you know, I'm. it feels dumb arguing this, Rob. It really does because they're they're both. They're the all top, key. They're all key they're players. They're all key. It's all, it's all part of a well-rounded package. And, of course, our worries are, well, you know, if you're going to bring people up, so to speak, you know, how does that then affect this entire package that we're really, really enjoying? Because you go from these great women's matches to great men's matches, mm -hmm. and it's just a solid, solid all-around product. And you, it's, you know, it's kind of like tinkering with, you know, it, it's trying to make perfect out of very good. And when you tinker with that, sometimes you end up making it worse. So that, I think we have legitimate concerns, but, you know, I mean, Sasha's been spectacular i mean this past year and a half there, there's no denying that she's been spectacular putting on stellar performances every match she's in on these takeover specials having good mm -hmm. matches on television main eventing house shows not just in florida but elsewhere she main evented a she main evented one of the philadelphia shows they stole the show in san jose they stole the show in san jose with her and charlotte i yes. mean she, she's been a phenomenal character on tv it's not just in ring no, her promos have, have, have improved leaps and bounds. She's been one oh. of the most engaging characters in NXT, not just women, all of NXT. Right? Yes. Her, Tyler Breeze, Sami Zayn for the middle of 2014, Kevin Owens now. Becky Lynch in the past month. Becky yes. Lynch for the past month would probably be my top five. Like, I don't think, you know, Finn Balor's great and everyone gets into the makeup and everything. I don't think he's transcended those five yet at, at their peak. They haven't given him a lot of mic time. So, no. And I worry about, we talked about how Kevin Owens wasn't in the teaser for NXT going to California in October, and Finn Balor was. Talk about a guy who they think is going to be there for a while. I'm not reading that much into it. I, I, I could go into the realm of not reading too much into it because a lot can change in October, and stars listed now may be changed by then, and it's really the NXT brand that is going to sell those tickets. But the fact that they think he was you know, able to be advertised for a show coming in October and Kevin Owens wasn't tells me they were at least thinking about who might be there in October. The irony that I'm not reading into something is not lost on me. Well, I'm glad your own irony is not lost <laughs> on yourself. <laughs> well, I'm the guy who read into the yes, all women video or you like did. a girl video. So you may have been right about that, but you did. I'm, I'm, I still maintain that I'm right about that, but yeah. <laughs> and you have a lot of key players, Sasha Banks important, but you have Bailey who will be the sole person to, you know, kind of bring in a certain subset of women into NXT that others might not be able to attract. You have Dana <sighs> Brooke, who I think has huge potential. She's not there now. I get it. She has huge right. potential. She has the, you know, more potential maybe than Baron Corbin does on the men's side. And I think Baron yes. Corbin has a ton of potential. Well, we're still talking about Charlotte's potential and she hasn't reached Charlotte's it yet. potential. Evil Emma. Evil Emma's great. There's a ton to get excited for. Carmella's still athletic, even though she, she and Alexa Bliss are still, they're still finding their footing, but they're. Yeah. Heather, they're getting... G Heather Janine on uh, runningandsiguri.com wrote about the NXT women's division. I tweeted out a link earlier at Shake Them Ropes. If you're interested in reading more about the NXT women and Sasha Banks' rise, uh, you can do that at Shake Them Ropes. Uh, but it is time, Jeff Hawkins. It is time for the main event of the evening. The main event of Spring Stampede 1997. <laughs> yes. Match number 77 on the WWE Network's top 100 matches of all time currently on WWE Network. It is Diamond Dallas Page 
versus Randy Savage from Spring Stampede 1997. Jeff Hawkins, I watched this today. Uh huh. I watched it last week before Takeover, but had to rewatch it. Okay. We ended up not talking about it on the Takeover special show. Yes. Uh, before I did that, though, last week I only watched this main event. I didn't watch the post match angle. I was like, I'm going to watch this match, and then I got other things to do. Today, I rewatched the match. I watched the post match angle. I also watched Rey Mysterio versus Ultimo Dragon, which was the opener of this show. That's that comes up later on our list, doesn't it? No, I don't know if it does, does but it's it? pretty good. I, I'm not sure. I know uh, there's I'm another going to look right now, but uh, if it does great, it, yeah, no, it's it, a fun match. A uh, let's see. No, their match at World War three of 1996 comes up later on our countdown. Oh, okay. OK, another great one. Yes, but Rey Mysterio Ultimo Dragon from Spring Stampede 1997. Also great. Yes. Dave Meltzer even gave it four and a quarter stars. Fantastic. But the match we're here to talk about, DDP, I give the stars, Jeff, and you know why I give the stars, as a reference point. So yes. people don't just have to take our opinions. <laughs> they get a third-party <laughs> reference point. I'm sorry, I rolled my eyes. I'm not that, saying, was, that was incorrect. I'm not saying the match is great because Dave Meltzer gives it this. I'm giving the folks a reference point. Dave Meltzer has been giving star ratings forever. Some people yes. value the ratings because just, they, it's a reference. Just That's busting all. balls. Just busting balls. Randy That's Savage. Mm -hmm. DDP. The main event of Spring Stampede. Spring Stampede 1997, by the way, which featured one tag team match. One <laughs> tag team match on the entire show between Public Enemy and Steve McMichael and Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> I, I want you... No, uh. before... I want you to understand this. One tag team match. Those were the two teams. Yeah. Also, later on on the show was a WCW World Tag Team Championship match. Yes. There was one tag team match on the show. Yes. And then Scott the tag Hall, team titles. Because Scott Hall. WCW. Was drinking. Kevin Nash versus Rick Steiner happened on the show because Scott Hall no showed because of drunk drunkenness. He might have been at the mm. show, but was too drunk to perform or he no showed. So Kevin yeah. Nash defended the tag team titles in a singles match against Rick Steiner because Scott Steiner to write him out was arrested that day. Yes. <laughs> WCW. This was, did, did you watch the, the pre before the, the match started with, with both Savage and DDP? Uh, just a very portion, but I was skipping ahead to the actual match and entrances. So no, I did oh, not you, watch the video. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you should have. Go back, go back and watch <laughs> well, it. Well, no, it's just, it's that, that my reference from earlier in the show with, with, Savage basically walking to the ring, cutting a promo and getting lost backstage. And then I thought, you know, a pretty good match from, uh, or not match, but promo from Kimberly describing uh, DDP's change in attitude, so to speak. It was, it was for her, it was pretty good. Mm. Um, yeah, th this is the time when DDP is getting started on his bad guy on a redemption tour type of thing. Because yeah. he's been, he's been the guy, he's been a, a heel, but with the NWO out healing the heels, he's the guy now standing up for WCW. Saving the day. Savage has been uh, kind of macking on his woman a bit. Um, yeah, and then you get this uh, this uh, no DQ match. Or not, is it no DQ? It or is, is it a no disqualification. Not that that really came into much play. No, but uh, this match as a whole, I just... I, I'm, I'm it, was, kinda, it was fine. It was all right. It's it's fine. I, I, there are things that WCW and the NWA do better than WCW. Fall or the, these no DQ matches are great because it's just anarchy. Mm -hmm. They're using the, the touch I always love. They they go out you know in the hallway where there are people milling about, which is great. They use real trash cans with real trash, whereas WWE kind of quality controls their trash cans to have styrofoam in it. Nope wet trash in the trash can so guys are slipping around the camera work is sloppy so it looks like an actual fight it, it's kind of endearing to me this match was the wcw big man match kind of like intermediate like it wasn't hulk hogan running in there against lex luger no oh, but, but it were... wasn't the cruiserweights it was kind of somewhere in between where you had randy savage who used to be a great worker you know kind of trying to be and ddp were... who was trying to fool people into thinking he was a great worker having this match it, and they were hitting each other with tough guy shots they were they, they were trying to make something out of it because you know ddp wasn't always in the main event no and he got a main event shot here yes 
and it, and Savage, I mean, helped DDP out. Like DDP was made because of Randy Savage. Yes, th yeah, and DDP credits this match with making him. Absolutely, I think. If, I think this is the one. Yes. So watch the match. It was basic. I mean, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this until I... yeah we get to Nick Patrick. Well, hold on. Let, let, let... <laughs> I do have a couple things real quick, but besides the sloppy thing, uh, and the stiff clotheslines, but Savage. Out of Savage. control, just smacking the hell out of Dave Penzer. Oh, yeah. What the hell did Guy Dave hit everyone. Penzer? He hit him. He hit Eric Bischoff later on the show. Yeah, well, Mark Curtis. Yeah. Who I, who I like. I mean, uh, Brian Hildebrand. Yeah. Mark Curtis. Yeah. No DQ match. Uh -huh. Trying to take away chairs from people. And if there's something that drives me nuts in no DQ matches, it's when the ref is trying to maintain law and order when it, there should be no law and order. Well, but 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 I love Savage's madman jumping into the outside, nearly whacking Kimberly Act. But Curtis finally takes a couple of blows for his terrible referee. Here's the thing: you have a no disqualification match. That doesn't mean you get the right to use all these weapons. It just means that if you were to use a weapon, you're not going to get DQ'd. Mark Curtis still wants to be in there maintaining law and order because you don't want it to turn into a weapons brawl. Just because it's no DQ doesn't make it a street fight. And now you I'm, have now you have the situation where all the fans think, why am I voting no DQ versus street fight versus so and so? Because yes. they're all the same match. They didn't That's, used to be. No, I agree. They used to no. have differences. Jeez, Rob, you made a salient point. I'm kind of shocked by that. <laughs> That's actually a very good point that I just it was driving me nuts during the match, but now I'm wrong. Okay. Good on you. Yeah. Curtis gets whipped like a dog with his own belt. I mean, yeah. Savage is just laying into him. And then Kenny Powers comes down. <laughs> Kevin Na or uh, Nick Patrick here was wearing that, the cutoff sleeve shirt. He was the NWO ref, right? He's Kenny fucking Powers. <laughs> he looks like Kenny Powers. <laughs> he has the goatee, the mullet, goatee, the earrings. Mullet, the earrings he's, is in. Nick Patrick he's, making you know mean he's faces. Old, yeah, he's the old guy at the club. He was doing his NWO ref shtick at this he was, time. Yeah. And, and so what happens here is DDP. Hits the diamond cutter on Randy Savage. All right. Mm -hmm. Goes down to cover. Nick Patrick thinks about it for a little bit as the announcers are screaming, what's he going to do? You know, what, what's Nick Patrick going to do here? Yeah. He goes down somewhat reluctantly, but once he's down there for the count, he's like all about it. I'm going to count this guy because I'm no longer bad. Although he was kind of still bad. Yeah. Because even and then, when the NWA guys come down, yeah, once he counts the fall and DDP gets the win here and Savage is selling it like death, like, he's dead. Kevin Nash comes down. He's trying to revive him. And Nick Patrick, who at this point has Kevin Nash's arm around his throat, Hand is, around his throat yeah. is begging for his life, saying, the guy was down. What was I supposed to do? I'm a referee. Yeah. Way to, way to take the heat off of, or the shine off of DDP and put heat on the ref. Well, <laughs> not only putting heat on the ref, but DDP just goes under the ring. He's yeah. never seen again. Yeah. You have yeah, Savage finally woken up, and mm -hmm. uh, Kimberly he goes gets up. And he goes ape shit. Again. He goes ape shit on Kimberly. Randy Savage then gets confronted by Eric Bischoff, because Eric Bischoff, while he's the leader yeah. of the NWO, he still doesn't want Randy Savage to get fired by the WCW real bosses for hitting a woman. So yeah, he, tells, he, he tells Savage to stop. He's the reluctant, or not the reluctant heel, but he's the heel trying to maintain power, as yes. opposed to just going all anarchy. Yeah. But... Randy Savage pushes him away because he wants to hit Kimberly. Yes. So Eric Bischoff, <laughs> the idiot that he is, pushes oh, Savage back. Oh, oh, the 90s when you could hit women. Right. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Eric Who Bischoff pushes Savage back, and Savage looks legitimately like, what the hell are you doing pushing me? You're Eric oh, yeah. Bischoff. And he punches he, him right in the face. And Defcon 5 on him. Just... He, he, and it wasn't even like the Randy Savage work punch where he like he no. tilts and his leg goes up. He no, there was nothing. Slapped him right in the out. face. Yeah, smack the hell out of him. Oh, he did the same with Curtis and Penzer yeah. during this time. Guys who you know, probably weren't expecting that stiff of a shot. I mean, he was roid raging a little bit. Even even, even the pile driver on Curtis seemed a bit stiff, to be honest was, with you. He was roid raging a little bit. Just so a now, bit. Well, now you have the NWO guys rushing the ring to stop Savage and stop, you know, help Bischoff up. So they're all in the ring, and this is when the camera pans to Bobby Heenan, Shivani as the announcers there. And Dusty. And Dusty, <laughs> that's right. 
as all this chaos is going in the background, they're just recapping the show, sending us <laughs> on our way. We'll see you next time for the Great American Bash. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of how Raw ends nowadays, where there's still chaos in the ring, and Michael Cole is telling us what's on the network next. Like, we're back to that. 15 years later, 18 years later, we're back to the announcers closing the show as chaos sprawls behind them. Rob, we have to answer the most important question about this match. Yeah. Heel Elizabeth. Was this Mm. her hottest period ever? Milfy Elizabeth? so to speak oh. cougar elizabeth i really wanted this show not to be the sexist show I'm sorry. and jeff is trying so hard to make it the sexist show withdrawn 